Okay, this is High Functioning with Barry Brown, and I've got Bert Backman. Bert Backman. Um, Bert, uh, Bert was a person that I came across that um, was cooking some of the best barbecue in, <laughs> I think, Los Angeles, maybe California, maybe no. the U.S. No, no. <laughs> um, it was a random thing for me. If you don't know who he is, he um, is many things, but also a really, really good pit master. Um, and uh, I came across him through social media one time, and then we actually found out we know pretty much a lot of people. The same people, you know, you grow up with everything from cannabis to software guys, but people that actually throw down in barbecue, it was kind of like a rare thing. Yeah, um, I never grew up with it, and so I mean, when I came across you online, I was like, damn, there's some guy that's crazy and looks nutty, lots of crazy um, concoctions with a crazy smoker in his backyard. I need to find out who he is. And I did. And I contacted you on Instagram and said, I, can I buy some food from you? And you're like, yeah, I do them every Sundays, was it? Was Saturday. It, Saturday. It was a yeah. Saturday. Yeah. Um, and I got, I pulled up, I ordered like a pound or two pounds. Yeah. And it was the bombest brisket and giant ribs, yeah. beef ribs I've ever had. Yeah. Um, and then at that point, I think I fell in love with this esoteric artsy artist guy that's just cooking out of this crazy smoker yeah. in his backyard. Um, and you just pull up on him and he's like, right. just dishes you out. So that's right. Um, dude. Well, you pull up, though, but you got you had to know where to pull up. That was the trick. Right. Right. <laughs> you know, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Those were the, that was a fun time. That was a good run. How did you get into the culinary? Y you world? know, uh, I was always interested in in cooking uh my parents you know used to, when i was little my parents used to take me to uh i i remember i would have chess lessons you know mm -hmm. i had russian parents i, I would play chess yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm not very good at okay. it but i would have chess lessons and in cooking classes and i don't remember much from the cooking classes but i remember i used to make these carrot dishes and i remember carrot salads and thinking like wow he can take nothing a carrot and turn it into something else and you know i was I always liked it but i always liked to draw to, to paint graffiti i was into you know whatever i can doodle and cr something that i can bring some color so i always cooked i got into cooking at some point more and more when i was just trying to recreate you know the classic french cooking mother sauces, techniques, dishes, and whatnot. Um, and, and you know, I realized that it's kind of like time travel. So right. if I'm gonna go and take a recipe from 1910 Paris uh, and, and try to recreate it, you know, you can close your eyes and, you know, you're there for a second, you know, and, and, and always, so I, I, I always cooked. And then one day I just found myself in, in Texas. I had some barbecue over there. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself that it was a whole new flavor profile. It was a whole new taste, and that I'm going to come to LA and and you know recreate that, use that flavor profile, that this technique of smoking for you know escargot for for whatever whatever you uh, felt like at that time. Yeah, whatever mm -hmm. whatever else. I never in my life thought that I would end up doing barbecue the way I'm doing it or have been doing it. It just happened. You know, I'm kind of just rolling with it. Where did you get that? Uh, where did you get the iconic name Trudy? Trudy, you know, it was so uh, Bashir, like these the, the 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 Jews say. It was just so meant to be. It was amazing. The letters themselves all dance together very well. You know, when you are trying to do graffiti you try you know you're looking you think you're going to become a, this tagger and you're thinking about you a go name. by the names right you go but you know you start to see what the letters look like and and you know if you write it out what's going to look like if they you know so the letters look nice and um i was what i was doing i'm ahead of myself but I, what i was doing is that i was always cooking i was cooking it up cooking it up you know like i wanted to keep working on it so i would cook a whole brisket you know, a whole brisket is about 13, 14, 15 pounds, could be more. And you cook this thing and it becomes, you know, you still end up with like seven, eight pounds of brisket, six, seven, whatever pounds of brisket. But I can't, how much can I eat? Okay, I can eat some. I'm eating some, 
my friends are eating some. Okay, again, boom, boom, boom. But you, you can only eat so much. So I would always, I would cook it. I would put it up on whatever social media was at that time. Friendster, Napster, whatever it was that going on. Napster. Napster. <laughs> yeah, that was the place. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, but I, w- I, would, I would cook the stuff and I would put it up and people would hit me up. Like, hey, I want to I wanna get some. I want to get some. Uh, how do I get some of this? And uh, I would go around town just giving it away. After some time, I, I realized that, you know, what I need to do is just break it down to like, general geographic areas and just hit this area instead of driving all over town and i started just you know that's what i was doing at the same time i have a friend of mine my boy Stu stone from canada and he's here and we have this whole crew of friends uh and we actually have a rainbow crew that we would go to the rainbow rainbow. was all rainbow every thursday rainbow rainbow thursdays we would go we'd be there all night outside sitting outside and uh so when his mom would come from toronto to visit she would make her brisket and she would make her brisket the way that, you know, Jewish mothers make their brisket. Not against it, not for it, whatever it is, they make it, it's great. And that's what like a braise, they do like a, a long braise. Exactly. And it's just like a very plain, exactly. it's very plain, right? Plain, you can do whatever to it. They add like Lipton tea or they put whatever Coca-Cola or they'll put, you know, chicken stock. It's, it's, it's mamba jumbo. It's nothing, you know, uh, but that's what she would do, she, you know. So she would make this stuff. So she comes in to, to make her a barbecue, and, and and so the guys in that crew started nicknaming my sandwiches that would bring them the Trudy Special because she's doing her barbecue. So she was doing her brisket. It was not even barbecue. You know, there's no fire involved. So uh, and they, someone named it the Trudy Special and Trudy, and then you know I was just going around town dropping these Trudies, and then one day. Um, you know, a friend of mine, this designer, clothing guy, just comes, just out of nowhere, texts me like this logo of this, what Trudy. became the, the Trudy. The yeah. red sta- stamp of approval. This amazing stamp, yeah. you know. I saw the stamp, and that stamp gave everything life, you know. Mm-hmm. That's, because of that stamp, we created this Instagram account for it, you know, separated my life because I had one social media feed where I would have real estate dealings and family stuff and my kids and whatever. So I separated the two, you know. I, I, I don't talk about like family and kids through my Trudy channel. Right, that's your, you're the pit master. Here. Yeah, you know, right. here I'm just the guy pursuing a dream and you know, my kids is on a separate channel, you know, like where but I But they're have, beautiful girls. They're beautiful girls, three girls, man. Yeah, three every time g- you go to Trudy's barbecue, these girls are running the barbecue for they're ru- you. They're running They're running, it, running the show. They're running, they're spraying, <laughs> they're wrapping, they're yeah. cutting, they're taking people's money, they're, they're in the mix, you <laughs> yeah. know. They're making faces. Right. That's they got their attitude. I'm dealing with something we're dealing with exactly, <laughs> and and uh, and yeah, and you know, and we would just uh, keep keep going, you mm-hmm. know, and um, and it grew to what it became. You know, that logo was was great. It really, you know, gave it life. We made shirts. We made memories. We got, you know, baby onesies. You know, it was amazing. Like to see people send me a picture of their baby, the baby with the, with ba- the logo baby. on. I so many of those. Yeah. I have so many of those. It's amazing. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, yeah. listen. This this kid one day is gonna look back at this picture. It's like his first picture in a hospital in a onesie. Like your baby <laughs> was just born. Right. Yeah. Comes out of his mother. Goes straight into a Trudy's onesie. It's amazing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It's amazing. You know. So like these little things where somebody gets married, they get married in a Trudy shirt. Right. It's, to me, it's amazing. Yeah. It's like, it's amazing. This is a, a huge moment in your life and you're wearing this. So to be part with these people and, and, and is is really great. You the, know? the food brought everyone together. So, Absolutely. So the way that I just want to explain it for people watching is that you would hit up Trudy. You'd have this personality on Instagram yes. with this crazy pit boss that's in the Valley, San Fernando Valley, Studio City 818, yep. Yep. which was crazy. He would have this cr- big smoker in his backyard and he'd have this personality of just this crazy pit master. You would hit him up. He'd be like, this is the meat that I'm putting out. Yep. And you'd hit him up on Instagram and be like, this is what I want. And yep. he'd be like, cool, I got you. And if you were lucky, yep. because he would get sold out really quick. Yep. And then you would go pick it up from him on a Saturday. Yep. You would go to this really cool neighborhood in the valley, like where I used to ride bikes and skateboard when I was a kid. And you would sell smell smoke everywhere. And you would go to this guy's through his driveway to his backyard where he's 
in Yeezys covered in oil. First thing, the Yeezys itself. I'm a, I'm a shoe collector. Destroyed Yeezys. Th- just covers and just beef broth of uh, juice. I know. Yeah. Those yeah. shoes would have gotten destroyed anyway, so I might <laughs> yeah. as well wear them. Right. And he would just be back there behind the, with the smoker. You could tell dude hasn't slept probably in two days. <laughs> I know. Because he's a pit master, you Tired. know, you just literally have to control that fire. Yep. Um, and he would just be just cutting slabs, just like yep. like a crazy wild man, just yeah. cutting them. And he'd you know say what's up, very rewarding. The experience there was amazing. Colorful people, every type of person was there. Yeah. Um, and you would get this really homegrown, serious smoked brisket, ribs, anything that was meat on the table. And it was just a phenomenal experience. And I yeah. never experienced I that. that. I love that. You know, but yeah. people, I guess, get in the south. Or they get in Texas yep. on the regular. We yeah. don't get that here. Yeah, they don't get. We don't get that here. And you uh, brought it here. Uh, we br- we brought it here, and and you know what? It's amazing. It's to me. I'm a huge barbecue fan. It's amazing to me that I've been able to be part of something like this because in LA right now, there's like a whole renaissance moment of barbecue. There's other other guys that are far better than me at at at, at barbecue. They are doing this this thing. That are bringing it, and you know, it's natural to have a little bit of competition between everybody, but we communicate enough, we speak between all of us uh, enough that we we recognize each other and we, you know, we're not out to crush the other guy. You know, when I see somebody else, you know, my friend Andrew who does these amazing sausages, I see him doing these sausages, it just inspires me to like, you know what? I need to get my shit together and, and work on my sausages and how what else can I do? You know? And and we push each other. You know, imagine if we had one guy in, in LA or you had one guy in Texas doing barbecue. I, you know It wouldn't work. It wouldn't work because mm-hmm. you're gonna have the same guy all the time. So it's 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 great. So I'm just happy to be part of it, you know. You went to so we can jump back into the culinary world of Texas. You went down there and you have an iconic um, smoker and yeah. her, her name is Tootsie, right? Yeah. And I would watch Food Network and I kind of got a brief of who she was before I even met you. It was like this older woman that's yeah. been doing- legend. S- a legend in the Pitmaster world, Yeah, right? she's, uh, you know, I think now Tootsie Tomantes, she is probably 84, 85. You know, this lady is a custodian at uh, like a junior high school in Lexington, Texas. Uh, where she works throughout the week and on the weekends she she manages a fire she's a she's the pit boss you know yeah. she's 84 85 you know i'm less than half her age and i would find myself complaining about my back and different things <laughs> right. and she's busting ass like in the middle of the night in texas yeah. she runs this place called snow's barbecue voted number one you know a barbecue joint in texas whether it's number one or not that's arguable you can argue about that but you know what's number one? It's just the thing is that you know you go to you go to snows. It's an overall experience. You're you're in the middle of nowhere. Population is five. You know mm-hmm. it's it's just the wood smells different. The air smells different. It's a great experience. You know it's just it's everything that you you imagine barbecue to be is that is that joint. And you know whether the food itself is best or not, you know. It's 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 great. It's just that you know you go there, you eat, you eat, you get full, but you also f- realize and recognize that you're you're at a special place. Right. You know, you're at just like you would be at a French Laundry, just like mm-hmm. you would be at at the, some amazing sushi joint. You know, you're in some shack on the, off of dirt road. That's so sick. The, right. Amazing. You know how how and so where did you get that? Where did you like? Did someone take you under their wing, or did you just figure out? I I bits and I pieces you to know, learn how to smoke. We got we were in an internet age, so information's out there. I think right. you can put yourself through just about any anything. school. College, any school. Yeah. You can learn yeah. anything, yep. you know. Yep. Uh so and, you, it's all self made. You literally figured out Uh you know, I can't take the, the the whole credit like that. You know, definitely my curiosity and my my drive help. But I had guys like Leonard, this guy Leonard Botello who taught himself he was uh, he came in number 10 on this list that the snows was number one many people thought he was going to be number one he's a young guy he just opened a second place he's his food is tremendous beautiful mm-hmm. beautiful and i hit him up on facebook out of nowhere you know and i was telling him like hey i just got this smoker i don't even know how to turn it on 
Right. How do I don't know how to start the fire? That's you insane. know? Yeah. And he's like, oh, dude, you know, let, do this, do this. And he would give me all this advice, you know? Right. And, and the thing is, also, you would think, like, why would this guy tell you everything? But I can tell you everything that you need to know about cooking barbecue. And all of us here will start with the same brisket, with the same smoker, with the same instruction, same ing- same everything, and we'll have four different briskets. Crazy. That's yeah. That's how it is. You know, you gotta dance with this meat. You know, it's not just like a burger. You can come, boom, boom, and, and you're out, dude. It's a 14, 16, 18 hour dance. You gotta f- consider the 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 temperature outside. Is it windy? Is it not? Is it rainy? Is it not? Is it humid out? Is it dry? Is it cold? Is it not? Is it, is it hot? Are you gonna wrap your the, your your food? Are you not gonna wrap the food? When are you gonna wrap it? How are you gonna wrap it? Are you gonna spray it? Spray it with what? At what speed are you gonna spray it? When are you gonna wow, spray it? Wow, crazy speed is all the time. interesting. Because you know, you spray it too hard, you can disturb the bark that you're forming, that you're working hard on it. So you wanna mist it. You want it to kind of like the, the you want the, the, the spray to glide, kind of cascade on, just just gently fall on it instead of just blasting it. You don't wanna like a like a water right. gun fight. You know, and people have different settings of the way they spray and the way they do. Yeah, yeah, you know, some people spray, some people don't. Some people spray late. Some people. What about wrapping it? You're gonna wrap with butcher paper. You're gonna wrap with foil. When are you gonna wrap it? At what temperature? You know, my buddy Dave Grohl. He's barbecuing now. He wraps with foil. He wraps with foil and he wraps it early with foil. Interesting. You know, but he's got guys in in the Carolinas who are telling him to do that. You know, in Texas, it's it's people are. Just like banging their head against the wall, you know, looking at that. Are we talking about Dave Grohl from the Foo Fighters? <laughs> the one, yeah. And he's smoking right now, huh? He, he's he's big. He, you know, he's got the barbecue spirit in him. You know, well, that's yeah. what, so you can't. You're born with it, right? You're, bo- you're born with it. He loves it. He loves that stuff. Yeah. You know, so it's like he he's got it in him, and and you know that's that's key for me. So it's like even if somebody will have food that may not be what you would expect or want or hope for, but you see that that person's got that drive. That the drive to, like, wow! I just did eighteen hours. It it came out like shit. I'm going to take start a nap over. and do it again. Yeah, I'm going to take a nap and start again. You know, he's got that. He's got that drive. He's got that spirit in him. Look, the guy's been. He, he was in Nirvana. You know, yeah, the guy was yeah. a drummer in Nirvana. Yeah. Foo Fighters. Yeah. He's done his share. Sure. He's done stadiums. There's nothing he can't. He sure. hasn't done. And if he wants to go smoke, he's going to. And crush at the end, anything. you know, that's what he wants to do. At the yeah. end of the day. Is he wants to barbecue, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, I talked to like Jimmy Kimmel. I talked to Jimmy Kimmel. You know, we also we, we we were both really into barbecue. The guy's a massive smoker. The guy has hosts the Oscars. The guy has his amazing show. You know, as busy as he is, all he wants to do is barbecue. Right. It's it, and I guess it's it's because it's it's a family thing. It brings everybody 100%. together. Hundred really, percent. Yeah. I would have my my ba- my backyard stuff. I would have black, white. Gay, straight, female, alien, a- Asian, not a whatever, anything, hip hop, ev- country, everything, right? Everything would come, and everybody was into it, and and people would tell me how the smell reminds them of certain things. At like times, people would get, yeah, yeah, people would get like emotional about it. They haven't had barbecue since so and so would cook it for them and passed away, like a, or or what, whatever it may be, and people would all get together. People that I know, obviously. We voted different. Obviously, we like different things. Obviously, we would not get along. But it brings you together. But you know what? But over food, we can hug it up. We can shake hands. You know, really appreciate each other. And, uh, you know, that's what food does. Let's talk wood. Yes. So, smoking is a large part of it's based off the wood, too. It's, It's predominant wood. It's all about the wood is what's your what's your go to like what is your secret wood that you use is it i no no secret wood there's no there's no it's not that there's secret wood i myself i myself i keep zero secrets so i get hit up all the time you know about you about this, this and mm-hmm. this you know my partners at the restaurant aren't don't like me doing it as much but i'm i'm so transparent because it, the, and i and i go by that phrase too i could tell you how to do something we're going to have a different outcome. you're going to tell me yeah right, you're going right. to tell me how to how to grow something i yeah. probably probably won't come out like the way <laughs> but you know with some practice and and, and and repetition sure it could come out so no secrets uh and you know that's just how i do it but in texas in central texas they used their uh their local wood over there, which is a, a version of oak, which is called post oak. So, so in Texas, they use this wood post oak. 
So for a while I thought here, especially when I was doing smaller amounts of barbecue, I thought I gotta have post oak. You know, if I wanted right. to be on time, I gotta have post oak. So I was getting post oak shipped over from Texas, which which is not cheap. It's got to be very expensive. Just expensive, to, expensive. I mean, you know, and yeah. you need a good amount of wood. So, uh, so I would get it shipped over. Uh, but over time, you know, I started using other uh, other kinds of wood when I wasn't able to get the post oak, and I started to use local California oak, which was red oak, red oak and white oak. And you know what? I got so into the smell of good red oak that I never went back to post oak. So I start my cook with red oak, and when the, the brisket gets a certain shade of mahogany that I like with the color that where it's going and, and the way it will glisten, the way it will shine, the way it will look, when I have the right cut mahogany, then I'll go into the white. Got and it. you know, and that also can vary depending on the weather outside and how wet, how green, uh, or how seasoned either one of the woods is you know if i have very wet uh wood you know a it's green not going to burn right it's, it's not, not going to burn right yeah. i'm going to have different kind of smoke and and so it'll be a slightly different dance you know and you have and then where do you get your selections of beef i mean are you is there a certain farm you know that you like here in california in the u.s do you I, source I, it from many I get, places I, I have a couple of guys it's amazing you know like we were growing up we we're talking about that earlier you know we had a guy for everything you know mm -hmm. so i can, always had a guy that i can page i can text right. and get so now i have a guy for for i have a meat guy you know i have yeah. a couple of you meat have a guy, guy. So i got, got a guy, guy. so i got yeah. a, i have a guy from one place and i have a girl from another place mm -hmm. that i'll text and you know we i'm looking for uh brisket that feels a certain way that looks a certain way and that's not above a certain weight. I don't want to cook briskets that are more than 15 pounds gross uh, because I don't want to end up with a huge piece. It doesn't come out right. So I, uh, you know, we look for the right size and right size, right weight, and and that's what we run with, you know, and especially when I, I believe that we go through, I, I can't imagine that anybody orders more brisket than we do you know so right. so we really ask them to just get us the right pieces and you know we want to get the best we can for our you know for the people that come through growing up here in los angeles there was many things that we didn't have and barbecue wasn't a thing that i grew up with yeah you know it was i remember hoggly wogglies in the valley of course and then that was pretty much it i came across blood Sows, which i still love to this yep. day i think they really did a good job yep. when they opened up on la brea you know, I was like, oh, wow, I finally got a taste of barbecue. Yeah, don't have to go um, to Compton. Right, no more yeah. Compton. Um, and, you know, and I still love their burn ends. I mean, yep. they really do a good job over there. 100%. Um, and, and that was kind of it. I never got to really experience any more barbecue. Yeah. Then you came along, and that was like, wow, there's another guy out here, and he's you could talk to him. He'll yeah. hit you, he'll hit you up. Yeah. You know, um, and then, you know, you opened up an amazing restaurant called Slab, um, very recent too. Yeah, um, three months ago. And you, now you, you know, I to me, it's it's just an exceptional place when it comes to now that. the sides. I love it. You know, um, we went in there, me and my friend, and it was like again, we were sitting next to the Glitch Mob, you yeah. know, and listening to dope underground hip hop, you know, dilated people. I love it, and it has that LA vibe. Um, Absolutely. You know, of like someone that's like, yo, I listen to, I like art, I like hip hop, and this is my food. And if you don't like it, you're probably gonna like it because it's bomb. Um, the what do you choose on a barbecue side? Do you like more vinegary based uh, barbecue sauces? You know, we don't use vinegar in our barbecue sauce, but uh, some vinegar is not a bad idea when you're dealing with all this uh, fat uh, to cut through the to acidity. Cut, to cut through, yeah, some some acidity uh, is nice. I uh, I keep it simple. You know, I always suggest to keep it simple. Uh, some collard greens, you know, some beans, some mac and cheese, uh, and some white onion. You know, if you remember when people would come to the backyard, uh, I would offer everybody who was waiting in line, I would get them, you know, a couple slices of brisket. I would put it in a slice yeah, of white a bread, bread, and that was white the, bread, <laughs> some some onion, some yeah. barbecue sauce, and I would give them this little yeah. folded like, little taco I looking thing. That, dude, it was great, it. and it yeah. was straight to the point. It was great. People loved it. I loved it. And that's it, you know, it's gotta be basic. You know, you don't need to go too crazy and try to try to, you know, make it too fancy. Mm -hmm. It's gotta be, it's gotta have a meaning. You know, whatever you're doing has gotta have a reason. So that's how I would eat it when I was in Texas. Bread, onion, meat. And 
And that was like my my original point of inspiration when I would when I first fell in love with barbecue. You know, that's what I would have. And when I do it myself, I want to get myself and the person eating it back to that original point of inspiration, which for me was in Texas. That's how we did it. So like if we close our eyes and we eat it, you know, we go back to that spot. Mm -hmm. And you have, again, we were, we were talking about Tootsie. You have this, you, before you had another smoker and then Tootsie was like your masterpiece. Yeah. That was, yeah. was that like a built custom? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got that. I got that online. I got it from Texas. I, 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 I remember thinking that was crazy. Like yeah. I just wired a stranger, like he reversed like money that I can't recoup. If, if he, he <laughs> yeah. could totally ditch me, you know, I just yeah. wired this guy three grand, yeah, and then I had to send somebody else money who's yeah. going to deliver it. I paid for my smoker on Wednesday, Thursday night. It was here from Texas. Wow, I pay, dude, I cannot get mail that quick. I can't get an envelope. <laughs> I got a a, tr a a delivery of of like a thousand get thousand pound. The, uh, just driven straight from Texas. Straight down from the Texas, pipeline. towed over. Did it? Did she have the white walls on it? No. So that's the on. That's my original. That's the Tootsie one. The last smoker I had made was the one with the white walls. Okay. Yeah, and that that one went from that Tootsie one was able to cook uh, like thirteen briskets mm -hmm. at a time. The other one, the big green one with the white walls, uh, that one can do probably about forty. You know, wow. which is a big jump. What's the you know what are the what's the hardest meat to cook? Like, is it a is it the ribs? It, like, what is the one that's so finicky that it's really hard to kind of just she's always just moving too much. You know, from the common cuts, really, it, it would have to be brisket because uh, any cut of meat like that, a working muscle like that, uh, with all the collagen and the fat that's in it, you have to cook it for a long time mm -hmm. for for all of that to break down to go through different stages. Uh, until it's rendered and it's edible and it's soft. Uh, you know, some people cook a brisket much quicker mm -hmm. and uh, it, you know, and they can, they can cut it thinner, uh, but it won't, does not come out the way it needs to come out. You can cook a steak, a couple minutes, comes out, doesn't come out, you can do it again. A proper steak could take you still like a couple hours to cook it over embers, something low and slow, not over flames. So even a steak could take you a couple hours to cook. You know, lately right. I've been doing steaks. That's how long it takes. But yeah, you do like crazy shit. Like when I look at you online in your, you know, on your your blog, you're like confit ribeyes. I'm yeah, like, hundred percent. You know, we gotta we gotta keep moving. You know, yeah, we gotta, we gotta keep moving. And you you're know, you my gotta, local Francis Malman. I, I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> I, will, I will take it. By the way, in sep September. Uh, it looks like on sep in September we're going to be cooking with Francis Mullman really? at the at the Hotel Bel Air with Wolfgang Puck. Wow, that's going to be a great party. Yeah. I would definitely suggest. I'm, I'm going to pull up. Listen. Everyone pull up. I'm Everyone pulling pull up. up. Come come through. Uh, you did a crazy thing too, like one of those spinners with picanhas. Right, yeah. which is another cut yeah. you don't really see here. You don't really see it, the shawarma thing. This is yeah. a, a shawarma picanha, and picanha is like that famous Brazilian yeah, cut, which exactly. I love so much with that fat cap on the top. And I used to be vegan, and again, I do respect I respect that world too, but I had to go back to meat. Unfortunately, I needed a lot more iron, and uh, meat has just been calling my name. But that picanha cut with that fat cap is just incredible. And yeah, like, it was, like with you, lamb belly. Just, it was, came out so nice, and some Israeli spices that we, we did on that. that that was, you know, those were cooked at my friend's place. Uh, we have this, of uh, a good buddy of mine, Avi, that uh, uh, we, you know, his backyard has been turned into like this meat, meat <laughs> like palooza, you know, yeah. there's uh, different, different methods of cooking that mm -hmm. everything he, he, they have over there. Uh, and, but you know, shawarma in Israel, you grew up on a shawarma, you know, right. so that's something that I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm and we do in Mexico too. Hundred percent. Yeah. You set up a trompo and yeah. you got that going, and you know I lo I love that. I want to get one of those going in front of the restaurant, get some lights, get some music, crank up that yeah. dial it a little yeah. bit. People come through. I'm gonna make my little tortillas. I want to make little tortillas with beef fat, with beef tallow in the tortillas, and just shave off this this shawarma, kind of the same, but it would be in the same. It would be shawarma, but it'll be prepped like. Like al pastor, you know, into mm -hmm. little tacos, give you like three tacos, boom, boom, boom. And hopefully it works with a little bit of zata and right. good. Oof. <laughs> What's your go to barbecue spot in the US? Like if, and I like, is, is Snow your 
favorite barbecue in the U.S. You know, I got I have diff- different favorites. Uh, yeah, it's hard, it's hard to, when people yeah. ask me musicians. It's like I have ten tops. There yeah, are none's you know, better than the it other. Depends on the moods you're in. Depends what you're doing. I mean, look, I'm in Texas. I'm definitely I gotta always go to my buddy to Truth Barbecue, which is where my buddy Leonard is from, who's the you know top top guy in. Uh, in Texas, he has like he will be at like the Texas Monthly, which is you know barbecue event in Texas. You know again, and uh, he would have like the longest line. People are coming to see to have his barbecue in Texas. You know, so it's, <clears throat> so that's amazing. Uh, but here in LA, look, my 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 guy here when I was doing barbecue when I was living here in LA, still living. My guy was Bloodzo, you know, Kevin yeah, Bloodzo, you yeah. know. So like to have Kevin Bloodzo uh, down the street from me too. Down the street is amazing, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, often people will come by like, "Oh, you know, this is as good as Bloodzo. This is better than Bloodzo." I'm like, guys, it's not. I look, I appreciate that, but I'm not trying to compete with Kevin. I'm not trying to beat Kevin. You guys you know? raise the community like you yeah, told me together. Exactly. Like you know what we're. Together we're putting LA on the map when right. it comes to barbecue. Hundred so percent. There's no, I don't I don't know anyone else that really took it to that place other than him and you. You know, so there's there's a few guys that are that are doing it, and mm-hmm. it's great. I feel like we slept on pizza. Um, you know, I like we didn't have iconic pizza. I no. I couldn't find it. No. I, I think Moza kind of came around Absolutely. and he killed it with his burrata and um, you know. Um, Orange Blossom Pizza, yeah, and that kind of like elevated it. John and Vinny's, I know you know those guys course, over there. Yeah. They elevated pizza as well. Obviously, everything there. You know, I I'm a foodie in a sense. I go around to all these places and I eat. You know, eat my stress away. Yes. And um, John and Vinny's, I'm always there. Sucks that I have. It's so hard to get a table there. I, that so I used to eat there before. Yeah, right. Um, Damiano's uh-huh. with Snake, um, and he used to order like pizzas and food and get it delivered from them to Palmdale. Wow. When Damiano's went out of business, John and Vinny's came in. Well, they didn't go out. I guess John and yeah. Vinny's bought him out. And they kept that Italian theme at that place. And they crushed it. Um, but to me, those were like my iconic pizza places when it comes to pizza in Los Angeles. I'm sure you know more cutty spots than that. But I don't really know better pizza. Mulberry's was kind of like everyone was talking about yeah. for a while. Um, but it just kind of like went down yeah mulberry was one of the first like really new york really pizzas that i remember i'm sure there was before that but and then joe peeps too was like kind of like joe thing peeps about yeah it. you know i had my friends that were working at uh mulberry you know driving around sell, you know selling pizza like dropping off pizza but really also driving around selling weed back in the yeah, day doing, which we love weed yeah, yeah. Love, love that you know so they were doing that and the guy Joey, who owns Mulberry Pizza, he owned it with this uh, actress Kathy Moriarty, and she was in Raging Bull. And they, she produced this movie called Kids. Did you see the I movie? I loved Kids. Yeah, so she she produced she did it. that. The yeah. owner of Mulberry's produced Kids. So the old um, Mulberry produced that movie Kids, Kathy Moriarty, and she was in the uh, Raging Bull with De Niro. And um, wow. So she produced that movie, and then and then all the guys from the movie, except for uh, Telly, except for the guy, you know, the uh, the guy who was also on the wire, uh, they came. So Justin, uh, who was Casper, and mm-hmm. Harold, the the black dude, the skater, mm-hmm. he came, and then uh, another couple of the other guys came through, and and they were staying at the house, at. Joey's house, the partner from Mulberry, at his house in Encino, he was staying there with them. They were staying with him while they would come here for auditions after the, the movie. So they would come here for auditions, stay over there, and also drive around and deliver pizza. So we were right. riding around. like I would, I, Three times I went to see the movie Kids in Theater with the guys, Crazy. with Casper and Harold. Wow. It was amazing. <laughs> just eating an, bum-ass pizza. Eating pizza, right. just, just... Smoking just, weed. Just being, that that yeah. was us. Yeah. That, but that, that movie was us. You yeah. know? That was yeah. exactly what the, you know, our life. Yeah. So it was amazing to see it. It was like really my first surreal like, experience of like, wow, watching a movie and living with these guys like that. You know, and, and Casper, you know, he he passed away, you know. Yeah. He passed away and Harold is yeah, I think Harold also passed mm-hmm. away. Yeah. I yeah. think I don't know. I have to I, have I to think look I that think up. Harold I think Harold uh, That was a that was a crazy time. Kids was kind of like the thing that taught me to like use protection. Yeah. You know, I was a skater, valley kid, not really a skater poser, yeah. but I roll with all of them, but I was always with the weed. I was yeah. always like that weed kid that yeah, always had you know, weed somehow. Someone's gotta someone's gotta have it, you know, someone's yeah. gotta have it. But you know, and that movie really set off you know, uh, so much talent 
yeah rosario dawson and yeah. and what's her name the girl who played jenny uh mm-hmm. uh i'm not good with names yeah on yeah but 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 there's like a, a, a bunch, bunch of, of them like really people grew up from that you know film. and the guy uh corinne harmony who wrote the movie mm-hmm. he became he's like this art big artist now represented by gagosian oh and, crazy yeah so they, they're all doing something you know yeah, we had a lot of, you know, I, I look up to you because you, like, look like the guy I want to be when I get older, right? Yeah. Just kind of oh. seen a mean, lot of me, man, I got to shave. That's the thing. I, say, I got to shave. I wish I could I grow shave. a sick beard like you. I, I, I got to shave. You know, I can't find my shaver. That's why I'm like this. But I got to <laughs> shave. Once I shave, I'm going to, you know. We were we were talking about the old L.A. days because he is a local. And, yeah. you know, Sunset was this really, like, just, like, place that where we would all gather every weekend and throughout the week. <laughs> Those and were the days. We had Dublin's. Yeah. On Monday nights. Yep. That's like if you heard that Jay Z song "Bubbling in Dublin's." That's what it was. That was his iconic lyric. That upstairs. was upstairs at the Dublin. Um, everyone was there. Woo! When you went, yeah. when you made it through up those stairs to you go were, up those stairs to go in, like you made it. You're like, like I'm I mean, here. it was yeah. it was prime time. Yeah. It was Justin Timberlake prime Britney time. Britney Spears. Britney Spears J- prime time. Jay Z was there. Jay-Z, every single time, like anybody Madonna, who was everybody there, everybody was there, and you would brush up to him. Yeah, you would like just dancing with him. There was that pool table there. Yeah, people were playing yeah. pool, drinking. It yeah. was just, it was, it was the it iconic was place. It was a, and then there was another place up Kawanga. What was that? Uh, uh, yeah, Joseph's. Joseph's became. It was crazy. Like, <laughs> yeah. L.A. was a whole different scene than it was now. Yeah. Um. You it know. Was. Those. Those. It was, it was. Yeah. Joseph. You had that club LAX over there. LAX you, was cracking. You had the Opium Den. Opium had, Den. That was amazing. Um, Opium Den was amazing. I used, used to see DiCaprio there every every, every weekend. Yep. Just all, all again. People were there just drinking, just chilling, you know, drinking. Chilling, you could even drink. go up and talk to him. Yeah. Yeah. It was yeah, crazy. You're dancing with them. Everybody just. Yeah. You know, it was it was different. I remember Kobe Bryant, like yeah. young young Kobe. Yeah, you know, I still have I still have a bunch of napkins that are signed by like various people that like we would be there drinking, taking shots, get them doodle. Yeah, like Benicio del Toro, like yeah. doodling, like <laughs> DiCaprio, Kobe, mm-hmm. whatever. You know, well, it was just uh, you would see Shaq everywhere too. Shaq was like a big staple. I would see him everywhere um, at the Dublin's. I'll tell you a quick Shaq story. Um, I I was young at that point. I think I was like 17, sneaking in there. Sarah Pantera and Jennifer would let us in. They don't even know our age. Yeah. And we would go up. But one time, downtown Julie Brown was bleeding in the parking lot in front of Dublin's. And there was a riot coming out of Dublin. Someone got pepper sprayed wow. up there. And, you know, it's a small yeah. area. So everyone's, like, stampeding out. And Shaq rolls up in his, like, little, little Porsche. And we would I, he kind of got to know me because I would just see him around town. We knew each other from car uh, restoration uh-huh. places. So he would see me and say hi. And he saw me outside of Dublin's and he was like, yo. And I look at him like, yo, what's up, Shaq? He's like, is that downtown Julie Brown? Because she was bleeding on the phone screaming. She was like a VJ from MTV. Yeah. And I looked at him like, yeah. And he's like, damn. And he's like, is she all right? I'm like, I, I don't know. And then a stampede of people, like like a riot running from Dublin. He's like, yo, just get in my car. So like I jumped in Shaq's car and we just, he's like, Where, where's your car? I'm like, my homies are in the club, bro. Like, he's like, all right, well, let's just dip around. So like I literally drove around with Shaq up and down Sunset for like 30 minutes, just looking for girls and stuff like that. And and, and it was just random. I'm a kid. Shaq is my idol. Um, and then he dropped me off at my car. My friends were there and they see Shaq drop me off. Like, where, where are you guys coming from? You know? Um, but yeah, Dublin's was a crazy place. LA was crazy. Yeah. Everyone was more comfortable. Social wasn't really like shredding people in half. The, 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 you didn't have that, but there was no yeah. Instagram. And I remember Jennifer take. I remember her taking Paris Hilton's fo- uh, camera away. Yeah, they would take that they shit would, away. They, they you weren't allowed cameras. to have that. There was no yeah. phone camera. If you had no, that in there, you're out. Like I remember. Yeah, that. there were no yeah. cameras. You know, AD like mm-hmm. AD on Highland was. Was it, was it was a different era, man. Different it era. Different. And it's funny to say stuff like that because then you're starting to sound like that old man, you know? Like, but we yeah, are. You know, at, the, at the end of the day, my, we are that now. At my age, yeah. man. When I was your age, you know, shit yeah. like that. And it's, and it's true, man. Yeah. It's I, true. I got into the club scene later on after, you know, Sam Nazarian and SBE took over. And it just wasn't the same vibe, you no, know? No, no. Bottle service came in. It was a different thing. And then it was like anybody could get into a club. It was just a matter just of money. money. Yeah, it was just yeah. money. So you had money coming in when it was on the others. You couldn't pay, you know, Jennifer and Sarah. No, if you vibed, if you had yeah. the vibe and she got to know your vibe, you're it in. It was in. 
or, or out. out. Yeah, that's it. You know, or are you, you cool? Come. Meaning, like, are you also just a cool guy in general? That yeah, that's what they were looking for. Yeah, for everybody, and that's what they had. You know, those were those were the days. Yeah, and 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 it's it's it, again, you know, the iconic places like the whiskey we we're talking about, peanut. Yeah, um, and that whole Magliari family. They're you know historical. You know, here absolutely, on Sunset, absolutely, man. Mm-hmm. They should have like a part of Sunset name after like Magliari. Hundred percent, Magliari's and the Adlers and yeah. yeah. God bless Mario. Um, you know, 100%. and and I and, and it's cool now. You see Peanut. You know, he's outside of the whiskey. Every I you know I drive. We're on Sunset, so I drive by him, and I always just see you know him out there on the phone or talking to somebody, and it's like that whole family's built sunset oh, you know of course 100%. And, and the rainbow and before everyone knew be real was outside on the patio just blazing hard with sin dog and you know all these people just smoking um that iconic times is kind of it's yeah, kind of whittling yeah, away it now changed. it's wiggled away already you know to yeah be able to drive by there and and hit him up and go up to the office or go around the corner and just you know it was just be part it's just like la we're right there we're, yeah we're you know part of this la fabric yeah and it, it's gone yeah I, and I, I think a large amount i mean it's crazy now people really become soaked into instagram and following these people but back in the day you could literally go out and just chill with them yep you know and get to know them and um it's 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 i don't know what the scene is anymore other than you know we really did grow in food yeah and and i think that's where guys like you that you know grew up in la and are a big part of the scene here you know kind of grabbing the torch and putting us on the map on a culinary world i mean obviously you have these crazy chefs like with you know like the francis guys but then there's guys like look i'm a self-taught i'm self-taught in many things that i do and i just went and figured it out and i am nutty and i'm crazy and i put more hours than everyone around me and i and i finished it yeah um Where's your go-to taco place in Los Angeles? Ooh, you know, uh, there's so many tacos. First of all, I'll be doing an event for Infatuation and the Santa Monica Hangar, and two of my favorite tacos, Tacos Iberia, uh, this, uh, the Unica Iberia, you know, I always butchered the name, and Mariscos Jaliscos will be there as well, which wow. is gonna be a fun uh, event. I like this taco joint near the Coliseum called the Tire Shop. I don't know if you know it, the Tire Shop, and you know what, it just has an overall combination for me that's a winning combination, which is it, we're in the middle of nowhere. It's all authentic as hell, no one speaks English, mm-hmm. There's not, which I love that, that nobody <laughs> speaks English, it's authentic right. as hell. And these people are over there prepping their, their tortillas, their, their everything else, the way that they they know, you know, mm-hmm. you don't have some random company coming and telling them what to do. They're doing it the way that they know, uh, and it's just great tacos. Uh, look, you can argue about it, and and I don't like to use the the word best, you know, best stuff. You know, who who's gonna say what's really best and what what is best in the first place? But you know, it's it's a cool ex- experience. Maybe it also reminds me part of my. My, my Trudy backyard days, you know, I'm, I'm in the middle of nowhere, you know, if something goes down right now, I am SOL, bro, you know, like, <laughs> right, I'm, right. I am, no no one's gonna back me up, and, and but it's exciting, you know, yeah. leave your car running and get ready, but I've taken my kids there, you know, we go after a game, the only thing, you know, I'll go to the Coliseum, and I tell myself, like, all right, at least, you know, I deal with all that traffic, I get to go for some, uh, you know, tire shop tacos, but you got the tire shop tacos. Like, you know, of course you got your Leo's tacos, which I'm, eh, you know, I'm slowly getting out of the Leo's tacos train, but. Uh, I've been going to Leo's, so I'm a taco connoisseur and I and yeah. I and I talked about this before. So Leo's has that more experiential thing. You know, I don't think the, the flavor profiles have developed there. I, again, their salsas or whatever. I think it's this crazy, you know, food truck on the corner of a gas station it has this yeah. giant you know spinner and the guy's chopping it up and, and it's like it's a whole experience um i don't i again if you go up the street to el chato taco truck yeah have nice. you been to that yeah, guy yeah, yeah. you know weeks ago was yeah nice. you know when the dad's cooking you know oh, it's, that i don't know who's who yeah so there's an old man and he wears sunglasses like this he looks like cartel narco and when he's chopping it up 
It's insane. There was a lady with sunglasses. The, 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 mo- the mom too. She, yeah. which it's him and her. If you see the son cooking again, I love those guys. Um, and then actually, the guy that takes the money looks exactly like Glenn from Walking Dead. And I tell him all the time. I mean, it's literally Glenn's twin, the guy that died. If you haven't seen it, just spoiler uh-huh. alert. Um, but anyways, and that's two seasons ago. So if you haven't seen it, you're not really into the Walking Dead anymore. Yeah. Um, when he's cooking, it's amazing, and their sauces are really good, and they do the grilled onions. But he's my taco guy here in Los Angeles. I love it. Yeah, you know? that's great. And, um, and and no one's here to you know, no one should try to change your opinion. You know, but <laughs> I used yeah. to go right here, nearby us. Uh, Pinches Ta- Tacos. Pinches Tacos is good. <coughs> tacos Way. He's not bad. He does you know uh, a melted cheese kind of like quesadilla taco. You know, um, there's a bunch of them, and you know John and Vinny just had their 10 year anniversary and they hosted like a whole lineup of chefs and every chef that would come to town for their pop-up at Animal, John and Vinny would take them out for a taco run, you wow. know, which was a great taco run. And like that, you would see, you know, and that's that's at the end of the day, that's what they love as well. You know, they love- I've never taco. been to Animal. I've been to Son of a Gun. Son of a Gun's amazing, Animal's amazing, John and Vinny's and John amazing. And they have Torah Familia is amazing. Everything they touch is gold. You know, mm-hmm. these guys are amazing. Oh, La F- La Familia in Silver Lake? Yeah. That's them? Tra Familia, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that place. That's them? That's them as well. Wow, so I've been to everywhere except Animal. Yeah, Animal's amazing. Yeah. I, I actually had a, I'm a huge fan of John and Vinny's. I'm a huge fan of Animal. I used to sell reservations to Animal. I would book reservations to Animal for like Valentine's Day or whatever it was. <laughs> and then resell them? And then I would sell the reservation. That's so sick. <laughs> yeah, that was like my hustle, you know? And I told him about it. I'm like, yeah. you know, I used, to get, I used to get like 50 to 100 bucks. Like, look, you know, you, get, you find yourself Valentine's Day. You don't have a reservation. I'll pay. Animal's the hottest restaurant in town. I have a table for you for four for 100 bucks. That's sick. That's Take such it. a sick hustle. I'm That's getting you the reservation. Hustle. Like, okay, give, I'll tell you the name. Like, okay, you're now going to be Bert at eight o'clock for four. <laughs> and that was my hustle, you know? Yeah. So I would, you know, make some money like that. Uh, and uh, Did you go to high school out here? I did. Oh, I did. In I the did. valley? I did. Yeah, in the valley, Birmingham High School. You went, I went to Birmingham. You did? I went to Birmingham for about a half a year. Um, got kicked out. I went. I went three and a half years. I got kicked out on the last half. Okay. You know there was a police officer by the name of Officer Flowers when I was. We there. had Officer Hannah. Hannah. Okay. Yeah. Officer I'm thir- I'm 36. So. Yeah, I was a uh, Officer Hannah. Flower probably came right after Hannah. Okay. You yeah. Know? That was our. That was our guy. And uh, those were crazy days. You know what? He. You know he got to his his dream fulfilled. He got to arrest me on my on, in high school, and um, and that was my my end of my high school career. And then like. 15 years later, I bumped into him at a barbecue joint. And then, oh, really? And then we sat down and we broke bread and- He was just a normal all, guy. Yeah, it was all cool. Yeah. You know, it was all good. I smoked, the only school I've ever was able to get away with smoking weed in the classroom while the teacher was teaching was Birmingham. What? Yeah. What teacher was that? Uh, it was a substitute. He was an oh. older black gentleman, very, very sweet man. And there's barracks in the back yeah, by I the remember. field. Yeah. And they get really hot and they didn't have AC and they have fans that push out heat and we were in the back row and he would substitute in he was an older guy I'd say 67 late late 60s and I was in the back with all the bad kids graffiti artists and gangster wannabes and they would we roll joints and he would play a movie and he would sit towards the front and we would smoke weed and blow it out the fans wow and all the good kids would turn around like you say something homie you know don't look the other way (laughs) and we would just like smoke weed while we're watching um and we were i I amazed that i smoked weed in a classroom while the teacher's in there you'd never smell that you know when you get older you don't smell shit anymore right you know so um but yeah shout out to birmingham for that um you know one thing that i want to wrap with is that I really do care about people from the community here, whether they moved here yeah. or they, you know, born and raised here, we're all the same, right? We all bleed purple. Yep. Lakers were hurting. hundred percent. You know, you, you're hurting, hurting our feelings. Um, let's step it up. But you know, I really care about people that, you know, add to the community. Um, whether it be art, yeah. um, whether it be food, music, film, and I think, you know, one of the things that I did look up to you as is like, wow, there's, you know, a crazy guy that mastered food in, in his realm and is bringing the community together through food and through these social experiences. And, you know, I, you know, that's, that's my shout out to you. You know, I, I care about you bringing business here. I care about, you know, you mastering a craft that was so centric and niche because again, it's like when you, when I talk to these artists that come up here, you know, no one was doing what they were doing at that time. And again, I don't know 
anyone else other than Bloodsoes that was doing that and then yeah. doing it out of their backyard yeah. um, on that level. And that was like, I would brag to people, like, I got a guy. Remember see, how we said that? We got to have a guy. I got it's a guy amazing. Yeah. that crushes briskets like we would see on TV in Texas, but he yeah. does it here. Yeah. And, um, you know, and, I, and, that, and that was my iconic moment of like, damn, you know, like, and then to find out you're a, a native and then we have, you know, friends, you know, there's a special place in my heart that you've like kind of built access to through. Well, we got Snake in cooking. common, dude. Yeah. Snake. We love you. And Snake watches, by the way. Um, Snake is an iconic guy too of LA. You know, Snake reminds me of, remember, um, you know, the Venice Beach kind of guys that would dance. Uh, Mr. Animation was one of them. Um, there was a guy that used to flow. He, he passed away. I think he got hit by, uh, Animation got hit by a car, but Blue Blockers was like a commercial for some I remember that, of course. And there was a guy, a black guy in uh -huh. Venice that would rap. He, um, he was, you know, there's iconic guys. Yeah. Street the, guys. The dude on the guitar. At Venice, right. I love that. Skate. Yeah. Harry. Yeah, yeah. Harry, I think his name is. Snake was like my modern version. Yeah, 100%. Like we would, we would see him. We would go up and down Ventura Boulevard. We would go to the Denny's. We would Jerry's, hang out at yeah. Denny's, Jerry's. And you would see Snake, you know? Yeah. He was such a character. We always knew him. <laughs> he was like an electric pink Versace suit. Always. But gold we didn't, diamonds. And we just, we didn't know which way to go, but we knew we want to be on his good side. Yeah, yeah. He, he was a good guy. He's still around. Um, he's a big foodie. I'm going to tell you one thing, and I got to take him to Slab. I would love to have him. be amazing. He's insane. I Honestly, there's two guys that I look, well, now there's three. It's you that I need to get advice from on food spots and Snake. Yeah, I'm telling you, I this guy's that. insane. I love it. And then my friend Bruce. Those three guys, you, Snake, and Bruce, know every single like nook and county, county here. And, so. and you know, and, and Snake, Bruce, and I are always looking for more. You know, we're looking for more information, for more inspiration, for more... You know, just for more. Mm -hmm. You know, so. and and you're gonna maybe do more pop ups again in yeah, the future. Yeah, definitely. You know, my agreement allows me to do one a month, mm -hmm. so I hope to exercise that. Uh, you know, but I've been doing barbecue, a lot of barbecue. I'm just looking to do different kind of fire play this time around. I'm looking this year to have you know really more of the Francis Mallman tip. Yeah, you know, and, and you fire, need to bring that. You need to bring that here. Open fire. You know, split this, animals with, spinners, with spin. You yeah, know, yeah. with hanging meats up having you know suspending whatever it is over fire you know just cooking over fire instead of instead of like the the old the same old stuff that we were doing at the Trudy's backyard type of thing one question i wanted to ask you real quick was do you ever catch slack from the you know the vegan world and the no, raw vegan i'm surprised world? i'm surprised yeah. that i don't no i'm not i yeah. was sure i was gonna get like a protest or something yeah i mean no i haven't had anything because we're in los angeles california yeah. and you know again i've been i've I've had certain, you know, autoimmune dif diseases and I've gone raw and vegan and actually saw significant changes um, in my body. But then I saw anemia drop on my blood counts and stuff that I had to kind of like range. But I would think that, you know, you would probably get people like, hey, man, can you can we stop less? But no, you haven't really come across. No, I mean, I, like, you know, when something comes out, like some press comes out, article. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Somebody will come out and say, like, meat is murder or like, yeah. you know, yeah. gross or the but for the most part, it's no, been pretty chill. It's been pretty chill. It's been, you know, everybody's been very supportive, and it's, yeah. I haven't had any issues. Yeah. I'm surprised. I was sure I would. I yeah, haven't. yeah. I think the in the in the future, um, on one of your pop ups, I want to bring a camera and my guy together. Yeah, come, and we come through, man. I love that stuff. And tell, I'm going to bring Snake. Bring I'm snake. snake. I always yeah. welcome people to come through with cameras, and my challenge to them is to be able to capture on film the barbecue spirit. I'm like, you know, because you can catch all these things, but if you can somehow capture the the spirit of barbecue on film, mm -hmm. you know. It's a hard I'm, thing to capture. I'm all, I'm all for it. Yeah. You know. And so right now you're, um, we can follow you. Slab is its own yep, slab. blog post. Yeah, yeah, sl Slab, it's at Slab, that's on Instagram. And then uh, uh, I'm more active even on the Trudy's uh, on Trudy, so that's yeah. at Trudy's T R U D Y S. Trudy's, yeah, it's like underscore underground uh, underground barbecue. Yeah, yeah. Barbecue, yeah. yeah. But I think once you type up Trudy's, it, it, it just pops, pops up. up. There's yeah. no one else. That, yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's just funny. Got it. And, and, and you're an interesting character in general. If I, I watch you on your blog, you have you're in every kind of place. Um, Francis, all these crazy places. You have a lot of great friends, and I think in the future, get you up here and just hear crazy stories because I know you have underground stories with a lot of interesting people. Absolutely, you know? absolutely. I look for that, and you know, again, I'm 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 from a small town in Israel. You know, like mm -hmm. most of my friends that I grew up, all of my friends that I grew up with, they didn't, they didn't get the same 
you know, experiences. You know, they don't bump into Shaq at the gas station. They don't <laughs> right. you know, go up the stairs at Dublin's. They don't, yeah. all these things. So like when I find myself doing these things, you know, having these experiences, I, you know, if I'm standing outside, like I'm standing outside my place with two bags full of brisket for <laughs> Sylvester Stallone. And I'm thinking to myself, like I'm standing outside, what am I doing right now? I'm standing yeah. on a sidewalk waiting for Rocky to come pick yeah, up. It's so sick. It's so insane. like I recognize these things, yeah. you know? So mm-hmm. I recognize shit like that. So like I, 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 I recognize <laughs> it, I acknowledge it, I, I live in that moment. So uh, I, I definitely, you know, I, I realize when things like that happen, you know? And so there's like all kinds of like interesting stories like that, you know? Yeah. Uh, you serve a lot of you served a lot of uh, interesting people. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. But you know, like but when slang I, and meats. You're straight slang and meats on the streets. Slang and it's crazy. You know, yeah. I, I like I'm not home. I call my wife and I tell her like, honey, uh, Tom Hanks is coming by to pick up. You know, <laughs> g- g- give him give him the pack that is is less greasy that's in the fridge. Right. Give, give him give him make sure you give him the wow. right. The, yeah, she's like, who? I'm like, Tom Hanks, Forrest Gump is coming. You That's know? insane. Yeah. I'm like, he's coming, give it to him, you so know? You've had like the creme de la creme for sure. All kinds, you know, mm-hmm. from, from all kinds. And, and you know, it, it, you weren't looking, I wasn't looking for, for, for the creme de la creme. I wasn't looking, you know, I wasn't, I didn't give necessarily... Uh, preferential preferred treatment not at people. all you honestly yeah. every single I, I hit you up I was you, yeah, I like a normal get, person I, yeah everybody to just come through you know the mm-hmm. only time I freaked out was when I got hit up by Jonathan Gold you know Jonathan oh, Gold wow. hit me up I get a message he's like alright I'm I'm, cur- I'm intrigued where's the barbecue you know a message from him <laughs> and I thought I was like, oh my god like I'm about to get shut down this is crazy this is amazing like Jonathan Gold I freaked out like, wow. I, I remember I couldn't feel my knees it was the end of crazy. service I was tripping you know yeah. uh, and because um, you cook at the Oscars I mean you, I've yeah seen I've, done, I've done all kinds of things you yeah. know and then I see Tom Hanks at the Oscars while I'm walking on the red carpet eating a rib you know <laughs> so he sees me like I'm walking eating ribs and people because I knew people are going to be funny and then be like yeah. yo but where are the ribs you got any ribs you got any ribs on you I'm like a yeah, matter of fact I do you know <laughs> and, like, and I pulled out these like individually wrapped foil wrapped ribs out of my jacket pocket at and the Oscars on the red the, carpet at, at the Oscars Jeez at the Golden Louise. Globes I was doing it <laughs> and I would just bring some up and I would post up and say like yeah I'm gonna be at the Oscars if anybody's there you know Hit I'm gonna up. have ribs <laughs> and like, people would come and then like and then they would tell their friends cause they're at the Oscars they're like dude I got a guy with barbecue inside here at the Oscars that's you know? so and sick like, meet, meet me at this meet me at this fountain you know and yeah. people would come and like I would have all these agents from you know ca agents like standing around all the like, big guys we're standing there eating ribs they're like this is fucking weird you know this is <laughs> this is surreal and that's what it's about you know yeah. like a unique unique experience because these guys have been to oscars many times they've been to these events many times but you know what They'll, you'll you'll tell these guys like remember that 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 oscar that oscar and they won't but but you know you tell them like oh that was the time that we met this guy for ribs that you know yeah, they always remember you they always period. remember that so like i'm walking down eating ribs i see tom hanks that was like already like my guy i'm like no i'd like to think i'm the first guy to uh you know walk on the carpet with a red with a with the ribbon you know eating ribs. he's Ill. like he's, and he's like i can pretty much guarantee you're probably the first and last you period know? there's no one else that's going to creep slowly trying to bring in like and then you got to go through crazy security you do know, they like, so like pat you down? You sure. pat you down. You're going through two metal detectors. None of them knew you had ribs on so, you. So, so the, my my ribs are wrapped in individual things. Okay. You know, so like I, they're like, well, what is this? You know, <laughs> I'm like these are ribs. That's sick. They're like what? Yeah, slang and ribs. Open uh. one up. I'm like these are ribs. It's like a dietary thing, you know. <laughs> and I and I walk That's through so and I, and I yeah. walk through with ribs and I'm eating ribs. I'm sitting there at um, at whatever Emmys or whatever awards. I'm literally I'm sitting there. Eating ribs. That's sick. Watching That's the sick. show. That's so That's sick. Great. You're my hero. I, for I, sure. I love that. You know. Yeah. Stuff like that is, <laughs> is great. <laughs> Anyone I look up to is all foodies. Like, and and, and you know yeah. when when we were doing like people picking up the food and I would drop that stuff off and with me people it would be as close to like as as like a drug deal as possible. Like I would make I would wrap it up. <laughs> I would make it. You know I would look around and stick them in your socks out of the yeah. trunk. Just yeah. pulling you know meat out of the trunk, giving it to people. And it's exciting. It was exciting for yeah. me. It was exciting for 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 you for anybody else who's coming. They were like, "Yo, I gotta meet this guy at Sweetser on Sunset to pick up meat out of a trunk." <laughs> and so you know, sick. it's funny, and it's like you know, yeah. the food can be good. It does, it's not gonna change your life. It's just the overall experience is mm-hmm. what was fun. Yeah, you know, that's what's exciting. 
I, I think that you're definitely an iconic piece to LA. I love it, man. And um, I think these stories are insane. Just I, I, I love it. And again, it's amazing. It's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's a, and, and you know, it's not me against them. We always say it. You know, I, I talk about it a lot. It's it's all of us together. It's not necessarily us versus Texas either. Yeah. It's just for all of us together to be part of something. It's really. I get I get that from you the whole way. I've never. Yeah. Even just you know people that there's normal. There's everyone's got that cut like you know that that blanket over them and they don't really open it up. The moment I met you, the moment the moment I've texted you on Instagram, you've always been a very open. Listen, I'll teach you. I'll you'll know everything. Come 100%. to my place. I'll feed you. No secrets. You the, know. You know. My mom always said the truth is the easiest to remember. Mm-hmm. So I'll tell you the truth. You wake me up in the middle of the night. I'll tell you the same thing. You know. Yeah. I don't have to keep track. I'm too. I can't. I can't keep track of lies and bullshit. You know. Yeah. I've done my share. You know. Every year we grow up. We we, we hustle. Right. You know, the truth easiest to remember. I keep no secrets. Yeah, and, and, and that's what it's amazing with yeah. you. And I feel that from you just as a person, very open, very like, you know, like hugging and, and like, you know what? Absolutely. We're, we're here over food. Yeah. I met you through food. 100%. I'm going to feed you. What else do you want to know? Yeah. And and I really appreciate that. And I really appreciate you bringing, you know, a, your take on barbecue to L.A. because we really need guys like you in the barbecue space. I love it. I and if you haven't been to Slab, you need to go to Slab. It's super fire. They have pastrami's on Mondays. Your pastrami is smoked on Mondays. Yeah. I haven't had it yet, but it's if you see the pictures, they're insane. Come through. I think the um, Colfax uh, pastrami is from Ugly Drum. Uh, I think okay. they're all connected. Ugly Drum. He, they just uh, have Eric, Wednesdays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He makes beautiful, beautiful stuff. He's an account. He was like doing accounting for for Bloodzos. So the oh, guy crazy. who was, uh, was Bloodzos accountant is making the pastrami. You uh-huh. know. And he does beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pastrami, and and then that's yeah, their Wednesday burrito, and that's their Wednesday burrito. Yeah. And I listen, I love pastrami, you know. So yeah. It's like, and you make your own pastrami. I on make your my Mondays? own. I brine my own, hundred percent. We trim our own brisket. We we brine our own pastrami in our own brine. Everything is our own. The only thing we don't do, we don't make our own rye bread. We support local. We get it around the corner from Diamond Bakery on Fairfax. We try to be cool and interesting and get it from different bakeries around the country, but you know. Fairfax life, we're getting it local, we're getting around the corner. I, iconic pastrami in LA, I want to hear your, if you have to choose. Is it going to be Langers? Greenblatt's first Langers. No, Langers. Thousand percent Langers. If you said Greenblatt's, even though we love Greenblatt's, I got nothing against Greenblatt's. You know, I could be waiting for the comedies or Laugh Factory or something. Yeah. And then I got to. Langers you know, crushes, thicker pieces. Langers. Langers is my number one. Langers, 100%. Langers is my number one place. You know, that's that's my last meal. That's my yeah. number one. I love Langers. I love Langers. Langers replace their tables, the tables tops, their countertop. You know, all the booths. Uh, they replaced them like three, four years ago. They replaced them after fifty years. They had wow. the same tables. They replaced the tables. Uh, Norm Langer, the owner. Uh, I was going there twice, once, twice a week. Half, half of that place was getting holiday cards from me, like in the, in the holidays, I would send <laughs> holiday cards. I'd love it, I wouldn't wait in line, it was great. I, you know, I was going there all the time. They saved me one of the original tables, you know? They, they oh, were throwing, wow. They're throwing them all away, you know? They you replaced all one. the tables. So I got one, and he, I just got the table top, I gave it to my boy who was, uh, you know, like from re- my old graffiti crew guy, but he's a very crafty guy, he's building things. And he turned that table into a coffee table. So I, I oh, have. That's so sick. And, then, and then Anthony Bourdain's <laughs> people from Zero Point Zero, the production company, I was doing a show. Uh, Bourdain's people wanted to buy that table for Anthony. Wow. Uh, Twenty five hundred dollars. I'm like, dude, I, I'll I'll get twenty five hundred dollars again in my life many yeah, times. I'm keeping that this. table is a one it's of iconic. one. Wow. One of one got that brass coin, got all that gum underneath it. The That's only so origin, sick. It's like it's like it's like <laughs> de- deli memorabilia. It's like there's no one else in the country. Wow! That, and when Norm realized it, what I did, he like his. You could see that he his, like tried to his buy token. He's me. like, oh shit! Like he had all these tables. <laughs> he could have sold. He could have made money. Yeah. People would have bought them. Hundred percent. People would have bought those That's tables. So sick. You know, just like we're sitting at a table right now. Imagine it was a Langer's table. I'd freak out. That's amazing. Yeah. One so of you one. you literally have a Langer's I table have a, as a I coffee have the table only one in your house in my garage. Wow. I don't have room. Wow. I don't wow. have room for it. It was in my office for a while. It was supposed to be a homework desk for my daughter. That's why he gave it to me. <laughs> you know, and she didn't want it. She didn't want it. It was too big. And it's a OG, OG, OG. It's got a, a brass coin on it, number thirty six for a double high. You know, wow. Jersey. 
one of one. Bert, you're an I amazing fucking, man. I, I love Langers, man. You you are the you're, you're like this. You're a gem. You're yeah. a gem. And yeah, this you're is a gem. Man, I love that. Langers I coffee table. One of one. That's insane. You know. You know? Yeah. And I bring it up. I love when it comes up, and and you know we talk about it. Uh, you know, people want that table, but you know, yeah, what are gonna do. I loved Hugh Hauser, and Hugh Hauser was on KCET and would interview local businesses. And growing up as a kid, trouble in the streets, doing stupid shit, I'd still go home and watch this one KCET, and he was so sweet to everyone, and he would just say, "Tell me about your, you know, your train store," and he would just talk to people about their train stores and Apple Pan. He would just yeah. go to all these places, which Apple Pan just sold. I just found out, which was crazy. Irving Azoff bought it. No way. Yeah, he he bought it the same week he bought uh, Nate and Elf. And I, I, so Irving Azoff, I'll tell you quick, Irving Azoff. I had a software company, uh, which Pharrell was kind of like getting me um, meetings with people. Uh, he, uh-huh. he like believed in some of the stuff we were doing and shout out to P and Shay. Love you guys. Thank you. You were there and support just like Bert. Like I could call Bert and Bert. I need some help. Can you get me someone? Bert would be like, yeah. And he'll, you know, yeah. same thing P did and Shay, especially Shay. Um, they got me a meeting with Irving Azoff. Had no clue who he was, you know? Um, little did I googled him like biggest music manager. Oh yeah, legend. Yeah, so, the guy on Ticketmaster and he yeah. uh, managed the the Eagles. Front, from yeah, day one. frontline management. So yeah. I go to I'm a little kid just pitching my software around town, and I roll to Irving Azoff's office, and I pitch him my software, and he's you know a little short guy, and uh-huh. he just sat there and he looked at me and he goes, "I love your pitch, but I don't know anything about what you're talking about, but I believe that." Pete Pharrell got you a meeting here. So anything he wants to do, I'll do. And I was like, really? He's like, yeah. So what do you want from me? I'm like, I just want like a letter of intent that you guys would use my software for data. And you're like, no problem. You know, so um, uh, that's my little Irving Azoff uh, meet and greet. And it was such an interesting guy. And I started finding out he's like most powerful guy in the music oh, yeah. industry and stuff like that. And uh, that's crazy. He bought Apple Pan. He bought, he bought Apple Pan. He bought the restaurant. The recipes, the the real estate still belongs to the, the original Apple Pan family. Yeah, they've been there for like eighty to hundred years or something. Yeah, he he, he has it. He so loved that burger place probably he, that much. He, he loved it. He knows what it is. He wants to preserve L.A. history. They bought Nate and Al. I'm in really the I'm really in shock that he bought that, and I'm glad that he's going to preserve that he place. Pre- preserve it absolutely. And and Irving's wife is uh, her nephew is my buddy who created my Trudy logo. Oh really? So that's all connected. <laughs> so we all connect. It's, it's so LA is so crazy. Yeah. Everyone's connected so, so, somehow. So, yeah. So 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 Irving's my my boys, like you know, uncle. uncle. Yeah. You know? And 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 now he does design and branding for you know uh, everything that that Irving touches. He manages Harry Styles. He manages uh, the list goes on and on and on. I heard they're putting credit cards in Apple Pan now. Like, you know how it was only cash and you have to go to yeah. the ATM across the street? I don't know if, if that's really going to really? happen. I don't really? know. Is there a need for that? Why need no, to there isn't it? any. There's no need for that. Yeah. Well, no, I can't imagine they're going to. I don't think they're going to change those anything. Old, those old, like, uh, you know, uh, registers. I don't think they're going to change anything. I hope they don't because. I doubt it. That place, again, Apple Pan is a phenomenal place. You can literally sit down next to, you know, someone off the street, you know, that's just, you know, down on their luck. And then Steven Spielberg on it. I was just there two weeks ago. I, I went there the week it was sold, and I had whoever was sitting next to me on my left. It was uh, um, Benicio del Toro and uh, <laughs> Benicio del Toro and that singer whose uh, brother manages DiCaprio, uh, Rick Yorn. Oh, really? Pete Yorn. Pete Yorn and his oh, brother. Pete Yorn. Pete Yorn. Insane. Pete Yorn. Pete and and Benicio were there sitting right next to us. Right next to us. And yeah, and Pete's brother Rick is you know a big, big, big manager. He manages DiCaprio and a lot of big, big. And names. they were just all at Apple sitting, Pan. Sitting at yeah. Apple Pan having, you know, having their burger just like everybody else, a hickory burger. <laughs> the best hickory burger. You can get a protein style, double double uh, protein style. Uh, now you go. Yeah, get yeah. it, Dad, the fries. You, you have a, you know, Israeli, you know, body, so you're just it's, born to. I'm wearing black. You yeah. can't see. It's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's coming out. Yeah. <laughs> it's coming out. I, I love Apple Pan. I, mean, I, I I think people ask me my favorite burger. It's always Apple Pan. Yeah, I, lo- I love it. But that, but that too, you know, listen, you got Apple Pan. You have. Uh, One other iconic burger place. Can you tell me? Uh, you know, the joint in Pasadena, which is- uh, Is it Pine? Uh, no. Pie, pie and Burger. Everyone's saying that's a yeah, good place. That, that's, that's a great spot. Bill's Burgers in Van Nuys, Oxnard in Van Nuys. I've heard 
that that is the spot my that, boy that, is def, that is definitely the spot i was going and hitting up different barbecue joints and i went to uh spago to have a burger to, and i was sharing a burger with my boy at spago and then we went across the street to share a burger at bouchon at the time where thomas keller was wow and uh, so we see tom we see wolfgang puck and at that time also i didn't really know him we didn't have any relationship which we have since developed and um uh, and we were telling him, he sees us sharing one burger, you know, he's like, comes to make fun of us, two guys sharing a burger. He's like, what are you guys doing? He's like, oh, we're gonna have another burger, we're trying different Taste burgers. It, yeah. He's like, oh, you know, when I want a burger, you know, I go to the valley, and I was sure for some reason he was gonna say in and out you know? Yeah. He's like, I go to Bill's Burgers, you know? I like, heard that really? place is insane. Going, and it's great, you know, you gotta get there You have to early, right? You have to yeah. get there, it's like a get, certain- get, get, there, get there, because the dude's been there 50 years making these burgers, he's not gonna be there forever, he wants yeah. to sell it, like, Go it's to Bill's not, It's ASAP. not gonna be, yeah, go to Bill's ASAP. And you love In-N-Out too. You I, are, I love. You, I love In-N-Out too. I love In-N-Out. Yeah. So that's why it's like when, when my boys in Texas make fun of In-N-Out because they're all about Whataburger. Uh, I'm you know, sorry, uh, Whataburger, I eat you a lot. It's nothing compared to no, In-N-Out. No, I don't no. care what they say. In-N-Out's the best. Just crushes you in half. In-N-Out's in, in the best. It's not even an argument. Like if somebody comes and tells me like Shake Shack or, or Five Guys or anything is better, you know, I pretty respect it, but it's like. Well, the thing about In and Out, it's got that apple pan recipe where it's been in the family for. Yeah, it's the best. Like decades and decades, right? It's the best. I, yeah. lo I, lo I love In and Out, and I also say always say that In and Out would be my last meal, and always like you really? know what? I love it. Like what you else do. do I want? I love In and Out, and and you know so. But then when I have in and out, I'm always worried. I'm like, fuck, that's better not be it, you know? <laughs> like, you know, because that's my last meal, then I eat it. I'm like, I don't want this to be it, you yeah. know? I don't yeah. want it to be it. Uh, but in and out is definitely a double-double, chopped chilies, whole grilled onion. Okay, so you do whole grilled onion. Whole grilled Interesting. onion. Interesting, I've never ordered never oh, ordered oh, it I, like I that. I do whole animal and whole grilled and chopped chilies. Wow, yeah. I've never done the whole grill, that's but it. I do well done. I do well done bun, cut in half with the chopped chilies. Wow! You see, some people have their different. Wow! Mood. It's, you're not. Don't, don't change your way. Do no, your, no, no, no. I'm gonna do, do, do your thing, the, but the whole grill, whole grill onion, whole grill, whole grill down. Mm. That's interesting. My sister had a, a roommate in Santa Barbara when they were in college. This skinny blonde girl, you would never think anything of it. She took down. <laughs> it was a 21st birthday. She took down 21 by 21. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you remember that? <laughs> yeah. 21 by 21, there was like that party that took 100 by 100 in Vegas Gee, and then Louise. shut it down and then yeah. like, they don't do it now. They don't do four, it anymore. Four, four by four. Four by four is max. Yeah. But remember, you used to be like yeah. crazy. Yeah. yeah. And which one Which one do you go to Van Nuys? I go to Van Nuys or the one in Cahuenga by Universal Studios over yeah. there. Yeah. Uh, those are those are my main ones because I'm in Studio City. So I'm those like lines are always so two. long though at night. It you is, can't, but yeah. you know what? But we, we take, we drive through we get our food, we pull over, I put on all these radio, I mm -hmm. take the windows down. Yeah, now you're listening, back in I'm there. listening to all these music. With, the, with your e daughters, right? E yeah. Eating my eating my double-double, <laughs> you know, I love it, waiting for that last bite. Yeah, I love In-N-Out. Um, I love In-N-Out. And then the, on one last, one last, I wanna get one, one yeah. uh, bonus interview, Italian. Italian, you know, so, it, we, dude, Italian is such a contentious, uh, topic. I just, you know, I, you Who's, have you have your John and Vinny's, of course, you know. But uh, I love. I used to love Valentino's on Pico that closed down recently. We love Paponi's in Brentwood, which has this amazing cauliflower and just a great classic Italian. Last night I saw we went to a show at the Troubadour, and right next to the Troubadour, I bump into these 1986 tacos, which are pretty hot right now. These 1986 tacos, which is nice, and then right next to you know I'm like. Dantana's right next yeah. door. I'm like, there's no way Dantana can take us. You know, they gotta be full. Um, I go in, they're like, yeah, we'll take you right now. So as full as I was, I'm like, okay, I gotta take a chicken parm now. You know, the you chicken see? parm is the best. Yeah. It's like this big, giant circle. Took it down. Isn't it amazing? I, I, I'm still, I'm sitting with it still full? Is, I'm still full from that <laughs> thing. I'm still full, you know, and I got to go get some Indian food later. You yeah. Know? But uh, it, it's... Uh, Dantana's is an iconic da, da, place. Dantana's is great. And you know what? We're fortunate to have all these Madeos and all these like... Madeos great, is fire. All these great Italian joints, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, Caccio pepper everywhere. You know, look, we you have this amazing place in Venice, Felix, you know. I've never been there. Is a great place, but Jonathan Gold, you know, shit on it, you know, and then <laughs> didn't put him in their top ninety nine list. Wow, wow, top ninety nine. Wow, at the same year that Esquire had it as number one best new restaurant in America, uh, New York Times Magazine had it as one of the best new restaurants in America. It was like 
people coming from all over the country come to eat there. Jonathan Gold even put it in top That's 99. That's crazy. That's crazy. And that's like, you know. That kind of hurt your feelings for sure. <laughs> you know. And then coincidentally, the guy passed away a couple yeah. months after that, you know. Yeah. So like, you know, think twice next time yeah. you this, Felix. Wow. <laughs> yeah. um, well, again, you know, thanks, Bert, for coming up. Of course. Anytime. I love it, man. You guys are right in the middle of the strip. I can, yeah. see, all the, I can see the Roxbury from here, you know. and uh, Yeah. A lot of good times on this block. A lot of good times. And that's and we grew up on these streets, so I'm kind of cool that we're here and happy. I, I love it. We're right yeah. by Dublin's. Yeah, I miss them. I it's weird. Like, they didn't get zoning for their new club, they so don't they just have became like, an They don't have, like, an alcohol license or no. something. So now know? it's just, like, a they weird this, office. It looks like a club out of Miami and just yeah. abandoned. It forever. After like, Dublin's, it was done. It's like, right? a, it's like a fire festival headquarters. Over yeah, there. they should have turned into an art gallery and just let it been great. everyone come do art. And you know, you artists. see now a lot of, like, uh, newspaper newspaper stands that are sh closing down, they're becoming galleries. Really? Yeah. This wow. guy, Stefan Simkowitz, is doing this newsstand project, and uh, it's great. Featuring yeah. just local LA, or maybe not just local, but art, and uh, and all these abandoned newsstands. I'm, so, I'm gonna, I haven't seen that. I there's you know there's a, a new stand on Van Nuys and Ventura yep. that I used to go to that's there there's a, there's one on Fairfax by Cantor's on that side and there's one right here next to Dublin's actually yeah it's been there for a while it. yeah I feel like you know I guess how do they make money cigarettes it's like yeah, that's for sure side biz for something yeah there's someone's washing yeah. but you know you should someone should do our gallery there for yeah, sure they're doing it you know they're wow do, they're that's doing amazing it. it's, it's happening and now we just had this Freeze Festival this Freeze LA which was a, our first like major LA art show uh, uh, that was going on and um, you know there's a lot of art in LA now yeah so. it's, it's it's on the rise it's weird because like you watch the scene and it goes up and down up and down but like now the art world's coming up oh yeah yeah in, in a LA major way. is LA is top 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 when it comes to art when it comes to food when it comes to lifestyle you know we're eating it a little bit with the weather and all this rain that we've been getting this year but overall LA is the place to be and like you said you know we we all for the Lakers, we bleed purple. And, yeah, you know. Yeah, I, even though I'm from Israel and I'm, I'm Israel high. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. A, I'm I'm an immigrant here. I love LA. Man. No, I'm, I mean I'm LA till the end. Now I, I have a, you know my phrase is like you know if you've been in traffic for at least one hour, you're actually you're a local now. <laughs> you know. Because yeah. it's it's crazy, and then there was that one joke. There was like a joke, well, real quick. There was a joke. The lady the the lady asked some guy out here. She's like, "Well, I'm trying to be an actress in Hollywood. I'm moving out there. How do I make it fast in L.A.?" And he says, oh, "How do I make it fast in Hollywood?" To like, and he goes, "Take take Fountain." So <laughs> you know, like Fountain is kind of like our street that we have That's to swim right. on. But you know, um, I appreciate Bert yeah, for anytime. you pulling up, Dude, and uh, my pleasure. We're going to be coming to Slab a lot more now because we're here. I, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. Let's do it anytime. You know, let's keep follow it. Bert. Yeah, come by. Follow Trud Trudy. Follow Trudy's Underground slab, Barbecue. Come by and you know support your city, support LA. Yeah. All right. Appreciate that. Thanks for pulling of up. Course, of All course. Of right. course. Of course.